Today we're going to talk about buffer overflow attacks. Now buffer overflow attacks are the most popular method for attackers uh, to perform arbitrary code execution. Now arbitrary code execution, in case you don't know, is where like, let's say he has a script or you know some code and I have some code, I'm going to send my code to his and basically like make some shit happen. So before we talk about all that though, I'm going to go ahead and, well, let's break it down and make it simple and start off by explaining what exactly a buffer is. All right, a buffer is basically allocated memory that a programmer creates and uses so that he can uh, store and manipulate his data. Oh yeah, well, so let's think about this from the hacker's point of view. Basically, we got this buffer. Now, we're going to fill it up and then continue to pass um, data to it until it overflows. And that data that overflows has to go somewhere. So it goes to an adjacent or, you know, n the next memory slot. And with that memory slot, now we have access to uh, run our own code, possibly pass in some of our you know, some assembly or some C, right. that's call to a function. That's assuming that the next memory slot contains a function call or executable code. Yeah, that's what I just said. Yeah, well, it is, but you want to make sure, <laughs> you want to make sure that you really, you know, have a good idea of where your code is going. I mean, it's not the simplest thing in the world to do, but yeah. let's think of a real world example. So we have, for example, uh, a firewall and its firmware, okay? So the firmware has to t accept the password and make sure that it's valid. So we're going to write a piece of code or some software that sends, some, uh, sends the password, fills that buffer up, then continues passing data to that buffer. And uh, after the password is, uh, is, is filled up, assuming that the developer didn't make write a program to check you know, the size of the password, we can write or inject our own machine or assembly code to manipulate what the program does from there. So we can get root access or, you know, change users, modify users, change other settings, right. that sort of thing. And I'll bring a great example of, you know, what languages do you actually use to do these type of buffer overflow attacks? And uh, I guess we'll go into lower level, level languages, which is, you know, probably the best way to do it with assembly and C. That's, and that's, keep in mind, that's because C and assembly, C++, lower level languages require that the programmer um, manage the size of the buffers. Now, it doesn't necessarily make them bad languages because they're very powerful and very useful. It just means that they have to be very careful to manage the size of their buffers. Right. But, you know, there's languages like, uh, you know, Lisp, Lisp yeah. and Java and Perl. Okay. Great examples of a programming language that actually allocate the memory through compile. Uh, and that's like uh, runtime checking and static analysis. Exactly. So, so well, I guess we'll go into a live example of this how is a, to actually do this. This is an example that we can all can, uh, we can all can relate to because uh, it has to do with beer. So let's assume that this glass right here is a buffer and this is a buffer as well. Now John is the malicious user, uh, M Mallory, hacker. right? You're Mallory, the malicious user. I'm um, Mallory, and the malicious hacker. I'm going to be Bob. Okay. Bob and the ugly function. <laughs> hey, come on, man! Don't be too hard hey, here. Bob I, the ugly. I'm function. the function that. Uh, is going to be calling this memory, the, what, the data that's in this memory slot. So however, however, and, okay. this is the actual buffer that we use for the actual login, for example. So this is the login, this is the, this is the uh, buffer that takes the password. Okay? Right. So, so we're going to go ahead and pour some, uh, enter in our, our username and login and password, blah, blah, blah. And then eventually blah, we're going to give blah. it Come to... Come on, we're on camera, and then we're you going to use blah, blah, blah. We're, we're going to use the blah, blah, blah. Okay. And then we're eventually going to go ahead Oh, pass it some extra variable or extra extra input, and, and then give him a little bit of extra see, information. See, the thing is, not only did he spill beer on my fingers, but he also passed data into my buffer. So, me being the function call in this buffer, I have to uh, read it and see what I, you know, see what see what's in it. So, right. so now this is when I actually take control of him, mm -hmm. and he doesn't really realize it. So, wow, that tastes a lot like uh, yeah. assembly. Yeah, a lot I mean, like a I just can't stop drinking it. Yeah. It's so good. So once you continue drinking, yeah. See, this is where I started to take complete control over him, and he, he basically has to listen to everything that I say. Now, why is what, it? Shut up. What is okay? this? Shut, shush. And uh, basically, you know, I'm going to take complete control of him, and uh, this is our normal no, this buffer. Is a... No, shut up. And uh, this is our normal buffer. He's drinking up that assembly code or some C code. Are you enjoying it? It's so good. God, I love assembly. I don't, I don't know what to say. Good, good. I'm glad you're enjoying it. How about I give you some more? Mm. Okay. Go for it. We're going to inject some more code into him. And uh, 
I'd really love to have some root access. Oh. Why don't you go ahead and drink up, buddy? Wow, access granted. Come on in. Why don't you just go ahead and change whatever users you want? You can modify my settings. I don't care. I'm just going to keep drinking, you know? And that's the basic overview of how Buffer Overflow works. Hope you guys enjoyed.